Hello everyone, today I'm going to be reviewing Rihanna's anti album track by track. So the first song is Consideration featuring SZA and this is actually the first time that I heard SZA. I think that this is an excellent opener to the album. I love the first verse and how everything is kind of set up lyrically. I liked her vocals on here as well and then whenever SZA comes on the song as well. It's just really enjoyable to listen to from vocals, production, lyrics. And SZA basically said this is a song for control and she went to like a writer's camp and then they played it for Rihanna and Rihanna really wanted it and so that's kind of how she got the song. In terms of the song, Rihanna said to Vogue. I just felt really connected to that recording. I feel like if any recording could represent this album, whether it's sonically, whether it's the sound of my voice, whether it's the attitude, whether it's lyrically, the beat, everything is so demanding. It grabs your attention right away and I felt like that was important, especially after such a long time between albums. Co-producer Carl Lang also told Billboard, it was being in the right place at the right time. Rihanna called on her to bring her some music and we had made consideration at that point. Pretty much the entire song. Tyron Donaldson was the drum guy and I was the music guy and then having the opportunity at night to put it all together with SZA, who was wanted to create, it was a vibe naturally. This is definitely one of my favorite songs on the album and I think it deserves all the praise that it gets. Track two is James Join. So this is an interlude, very short track overall, but I love it. And I love those songs that just leave you wanting more. And this is me every single time that I listen to this record. Pretty short and sweet. I love the production, the lyrics, nice vocal on here as well. Definitely one of my favorites on this album. About this song, it says, James Join is named after one of Rihanna's co-writers, James Fauntleroy. He confirmed on Twitter that the track was named for him. Fauntleroy and Rihanna previously worked together on a number of tracks from Rated R including the single Te Amo and Wait Your Turn. She spoke about the song during her V Magazine cover shoot saying, Dude, I'm in love with my interludes. This one called James Joint is on constant repeat. Yeah, yeah. What a song. What a song. What a moment she ate. Track three is Kiss It Better. I think this is a great song overall. Love the production to it. Great lyrics overall, especially the intro, the way that it starts with the first verse, the pre-chorus, the chorus. It's just really good with the songwriting. And here's a little bit about this song, but definitely a fan favorite and rightfully so. Track four is Work featuring Drake. A lot of people talk about like the accent and how she's kind of singing this song. And on the screen, I have her kind of explaining why she chose to sing it in that way and collaborating with Drake and all those things essentially. So my thoughts on this song overall I've got tired of it just because it's been so overplayed re-listening to it again for this video I can appreciate it I like what she did with her part you know I think that it's a catchy song and everything lyrics don't always have to be super meaningful and stuff like that it's about what's catchy I could really care less half the time what people are saying as long as you're making a catchy song and you know it has a good groove to it as far as Drake on here I don't listen to his parts anymore y'all know I keep my foot on Drake's neck like a weirdo and so if I'm gonna listen to this song I skip across his parts and you know that's how I do it but I don't know I kind of just over the song because of its popularity and stuff like that it was good for the time that's what I can say track five is Desperado I think that this is such a cool song with the lyrics and the production I like her vocals on here as well very cinematic and here's a little bit about the song and kind of talking about the production according to song facts producer the Schultz explained to Billboard magazine I actually had the Desperado track it wasn't written to and I actually went over to her house and I had just taken some things I thought would be a good fit I had an even heard anything she was doing so it was like a completely blind thing but my friend Rook wrote this song he was over there and he invited me to come over so that was like a random chain of events that turned out to work but that's not always the case I don't usually just bring in something like that randomly I met her Rihanna and she had a place that she was working on a bunch of music me and Rook were just in a room vibing out to the Desperado track that I had just started working on it she didn't hear it till there was already lyrics on it I didn't actually play it for her I actually found out she had a lot of people working on stuff for her it might have been a week after I'd gone over her house and did that song and I just heard from her team that she really loves the record. One thing led to another and she cut it but I actually never really presented the record to her. Track 6 is Woo. I'll just get to the point. This song is trash, especially Travis Scott's parts. Her parts on here are okay but as the song goes on more it gets worse. You know, here's a little bit more about the song. I never went up for the song. Listening to it again didn't really change my mind much. It's a skip. It's trash. I don't get why people like it. Track 7 is Needed Me and I mean at the beginning she's really setting the tone of the song saying I was basically on my own you know i used you for sex or whatever you really needed me i didn't need you and it's just a fun song to listen to you know is it dated yes but it was good for the time and then here's a little bit about the actual song but i still enjoy this record and i really liked it at the time track eight is yeah i said it and i think this is definitely an underrated song on this album i just really like the change of pace of the production and everything definitely a more subdued kind of moment but i still really like it overall like the lyrics good vocals just a good vibe and energy around the song and Timbaland has a production credit on this which explains a lot but I really enjoy this song it's short it's sweet 
it does what it needs to do. Track nine is Same Old Mistake. So this is a Tame Impala cover and I heard her version first and then I went and listened to the original. I like hers a lot more just because I think that she gave a better vocal on it. And yeah, just her presence on the song, what she did with it overall, absolutely love, especially whenever that chorus hits. It's so good. It is so good. This is definitely one of my favorites on the album and definitely one of Rihanna's better, longer songs overall. So yeah, she absolutely ate this one up. Track 10 is Never Ending. I really like the lyrics in this one the guitars, production, vocal, another one of my favorite songs on this album. Just think it's absolutely exquisite. Track 11 is Love on the Brain. I really enjoyed the lyrics on here. I think it's super catchy. I think it's super well written. And I love that part whenever she says, I'm tired of being played like a violin and her vocals there. But I definitely think this is one of her strongest vocal performances. I like the production on here a lot. Everything on this song just works. It's a favorite and rightfully so. Track 12 is Higher. I think that this was a good one lyrically. The vocal at certain parts kind of annoys me. Decent production. Apparently it was only written in 20 minutes and Rihanna said that they were recording it at four in the morning. So learn something new every day. It's a decent record. Track 13 is Close to You. So this is easily my favorite song on the album and probably my favorite Rihanna song right next to Get It Over With. I really like the lyrics on this song, especially that first verse. And one of my favorite parts was whenever she says, but I'm in love, can't blame me for checking like her vocals at that point. Yeah, this is just a great kind of ballad moment for her. I just really like the production on there. They just knew exactly what to do there. The vocal, the writing, everything on the song is perfection. I think it's just a beautiful record. I think it's underrated. I do because I don't really see people talking to this when it's about Rihanna's best songs and I think that we should talk about it a little bit more. I'm sorry because she absolutely did what had to be done and here's James Fontlower talking a little bit about the song but I'm very fond of this one myself. Track 14 is Goodnight Gotham. This is one of the most pointless songs Rihanna's ever released. Today I learned that it doesn't have any vocals from her. It's just a Florence and the Machine sample. Why would you put this on the album and have us listen to it? What was the point of this song? We never should have had it. I don't know why you threw it up there. It's a skit. Yeah, I don't know what they were doing. Track 15 is Pose and I already didn't like this song, but re-listening it actually got worse. I think that this song is a hot mess. And of course, Travis Scott is at the scene of the crime yet again. Fuck Travis Scott. I never really went up from that much. I listened to him with his features with the whole Astroworld controversy. Yeah. I hate Travis Scott. This song, absolute trash. Again, why put this on the album? Why make us listen to this? I don't get it. Sometimes Rihanna just be doing shit. The 16th and final track is Sex With Me, aka the only deluxe song on this album that's worth listening to. I think that this is just really fun with the lyrics. I think that the production is pretty good with it. I like the vocals on here too. And on the screen, it's a little bit about the writing of the song. So in terms of my favorite songs on this album, Close To You is at number one. Also, I really love Never Ending, James Joint, Consideration, and Same Old Mistakes. So my overall thoughts on this album, I think it's great for the most part. Like I said, I have some skips. Like Woo, for example, and the only good deluxe song is Sex With Me. So I have my moments that aren't necessarily my favorite. Like I said, work kind of got tired over the years. I think some of the songs on this album do sound dated, I will say that. But overall, it's a great album to listen to. I think that it is her best album. I think there's a lot of strength in the tracks on here overall. Great production, probably her best vocal performance for the most part on the album for her standards, like the songwriting. It's just a mature effort. I'm pretty sure she's involved in the song writing for pretty much every single song on here. So yeah, she really took her time with this one. And if this is her last album, then I'm happy with it. Definitely one of the best albums of the year. And what a great body of work. So that is going to be it for my review of Rihanna's anti-deluxe album. Shout out to my subscriber who recommended that I do this a few weeks ago. I was thinking of a video to do. I was like, oh yeah, they told me I should do this one. So I decided to put it together. So thanks for the recommendation. I had a good time revisiting this album and throwing my thoughts together for you all. I did do a video showing my top 10 Rihanna songs and I have a few videos in her so I'll link it below in the description at the end of this video if you guys would like to check those out but that's going to be it for the video thank you so much for watching it if you enjoyed it you can give it a like below it helps me out a lot on YouTube algorithm I very much appreciate it and you can subscribe if you would like to see more videos like this I post album reviews and album reactions every single week onto this channel and so if you hit the bell you get a notification for when I post so you're not missing brand new videos come out first link down below in the description will be my second YouTube channel so on there I'm talking about the music industry and kind of current trending topics so I recently talked about Janet Jackson and Kamala Harris, the entire situation there, and do you want to know musical artists' political views or not, and kind of my stance on that subject. I had a video where there was talking about, you know, remove one 2024 single. I ranked all of them and gave my thoughts there. I talked about music lawsuits, is it plagiarism or coincidence, and I gave a couple things. Who should win the next MTV Video Vanguard award out of a few people? What is your favorite album by a three-piece band? What is your favorite double album? So those are some of the recent things that I've made. Also, one of my favorite ones that I did was talking about what is 
is a star in the music industry why we should stop calling everybody one and i gave examples i also make a bunch of videos on the show dance songs that's like my favorite show of all time so i got stuff on there i talk about the nfl and the wnba sometimes i do tier lists, just whatever i'm feeling so i post every day on the channel i've not missed a day this year i'm very proud of it so subscribe over there if you want to see more of me and shorter form content thank you to everyone who has subscribed over there we just hit 5.4k and that means a whole lot to me i can't even say i'm also going to have all my social media linked below so twitter instagram so what about tiktok and airbuds if you would like to follow me on there free palestine this is something that we must educate ourselves on if you wanted to learn more donate i have links below for that make sure that you register to vote i will be voting for kamala harris in november this is something that is very important so make sure that you register and yeah that's gonna be it thank you so much for watching this video and i'll see you in my next one